What is up everybody? Welcome back to the Maths Guide. Today we're going to be looking at how to understand column method of subtraction. So let's waste no time, let's go. Okay, our top tip for today is we are going to use column titles to help us avoid making any mistakes. So before we look at column subtraction, I want to show you what you might use before column subtraction to work out a question like this. So 234 can be broken into 200 and 34 and this process is called partitioning or expanding the number and we are subtracting 123 so one way that we could do this is we could just look at our hundreds column we could say we've got 200 and we're subtracting 100 that leaves me with 100 then in my tens column I have a 30 and I'm subtracting a 20 that leaves me with 10 and in my ones column I have a 4 but I'm subtracting 3, leaving me with 1. And then when I put all this back together, I could quite clearly see I have 111. So that's what we call the partitioning subtraction method. And it's pretty good. It works well, except there is a big problem. And we can see that with this red chili example, the second example. If I have 649 and I subtract 100, and 73 then I can do exactly the same thing I can look at my hundreds column and I can say well I had 600 I've taken away 100 that leaves me with 500 but then here's where the problem starts because when I have my 40 and I try and take away 70 I can't do it because 40 subtract 70 leaves me with a negative number and I don't want a negative number that's gonna be very hard to calculate and I can't just flip this question around, which is what can happen at this point. And I can't just do 70 subtract 40 because that's a totally different question. So if I was to carry on, I'd have minus 30 and then 9 subtract 3 is 6. And then when I try to add all this back together, I'm going to end up getting myself very confused. So we need another method. And that other method is called column subtraction. So let's have a look at column subtraction with this second example. And I wanna show you a way that we can think about transitioning from the expanded method you've just seen into short column methods. So let's put a little dividing line down here and I'm gonna have method A and method B and we're gonna do it at the same time. So 649 could look like this, 649. And then I'm subtracting 173. So again, I've expanded, but the only difference is now I have put them into these columns, so it's starting to look like column method. Now I could compare that to the short column method, which would be on this other side, and I would just have 649 subtract 173. So now I can see I have these two different variants, type A and type B. Type A is the expanded method of column subtraction. Now I wanna look at my top tip, and I wanna think about adding my column titles, ones tens and hundreds ones tens and hundreds this will help me just make less mistakes because i can now clearly see i put the digits in the right space now the next very important rule of column method is rather than starting here at our largest value we actually have to start at our smallest value and we say the smallest value because although it is ones in this case so this column just here it might be even smaller than ones when i get into my decimals so the expression we use is starting at the smallest value so if i start at the smallest value which is my ones just here i'm going to do nine subtract three and that leaves me with six let's do the same on example b start with my ones nine subtract three leaves me with six exactly the same in both so far now here's where we get a little complicated because i have that same tricky question i have 40 subtract 70 and i can see that being shown in both cases in type a i've got 40 subtract 70 nice and clearly written out in type b i have to understand that the four is sitting in the tens column so i actually have four groups of 10 or in other words 40 so it's the same question, just looks slightly differently. So 40 subtract 70, can I do it? No. So what can I do? Well, I can look next door at this bigger value and I can see that I have 600 here. Now, if I take a whole group of this away and give it to here, I'm gonna end up with 
100 plus my 40, giving me a total now of 140. That's pretty easy to see in the expanded method. I've borrowed a whole 100, I've added it to the 40, that leaves me a total of 140. Now when I do 140 subtract 70, I can get an answer of 70. Now let's look at that with example B, with just looking at the short method. When I try and do this for subtract 7, I can't do it. So what do I have to do? That's right, I'm going to look next door, and I'm going to take this 6 and put it down to a 5. So what have I just done? I've seen that there was 600, and I've removed it down to only 500, and I've borrowed a whole 100 that I'm now going to put in front of my 4, because remember it's not a 4, it's actually a 40, so by putting my 1 in front of it, I'm now making 140, which is exactly what we had over here, and it's exactly what I've got over here too. So it's exactly the same, just looks differently because I'm doing it the short method. Now when I do 14, subtract 7, which is what's shown in this column, I get an answer of 7. Whew, pretty challenging, right? But quite clearly understandable when we look at this expanded method. So the expanded method might be a bit longer, but it makes us understand it more. The short method over here is easier and quicker, but we might not actually understand what we're doing. Let's carry on. And over here, I can see I still have 500 left. So 500 subtract my 100 leaves me with 400. And over on my short method, 5 subtract 1 leaves me with 4. Now I'm not quite done because over on this short method, I've got my final answer, 476. But in my expanded method, my answer is still expanded. So I need to do the final step, which is to add it all together. So I'd have 400 plus 70 plus 6 equals 476. Same answer in both, just two different methods. This method right here, the expanded method, is a very good introduction to column method so that we can clearly see what we're doing. Now it's your turn. Have a go at answering these two questions and have a go at using both methods. Have a go at using the expanded subtraction method and have a go at using short method. Put your answers in the comment section. I'm going to make sure I mark every single one. And there we go. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. If it was, head on over to themathshelter.com where you're going to find loads more videos to help you with everything in your age group maths. But for now, guys, I'm going to see you in another video. Peace out.